Let's give her a go. No, 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 no. The Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4 is very powerful, easily able to match any of those fancy AIO liquid coolers. So it's time to stop worrying about a plastic contraption that moves water right by your computery things, and time to come home to a giant metal box that does cold things to your CPU. So I've been eyeing this big boy for probably over a year now, ever since I saw it in an episode of Linus Gets All the Best Stuff. And actually surprised us with computers. And Jeff is poor and stupid. Well, I finally did get Not Poor Enough and found this on Amazon as open box for only 75 bucks. I've had pretty good success on Amazon with getting their open boxes like new, very good, things like that. Now this did say like new. And as we can see, uh, I mean, by all accounts, the cooler inside is in very good condition. Bam. But the box itself, uh, a little bit more than uh, minor. So needless to say, I don't believe this will be going on uh, the, the fun shelf back there. Yeah, let's throw it up there anyway. Put it right with the stuff that I have there. Get real f***ing there. Okay, yeah, no, that's beautiful. Can't really, can't really see it or nothing, but you know, it's freaking pretty. Getting back to it, the big contention I've no, I need, I need the box. I can just slide it right there. The big contention going on is whether AIO liquid coolers are really that much better than most air coolers. And especially, you know, whenever you get into these more expensive, larger air coolers. Personally, I've been using liquid AIOs for a while. I've used all the way from the lowest side to the highest side, and there really isn't a huge difference. Most of them are loud. I think the NCXT X62 I used to have, that one was actually really quiet. That was a great one. I didn't think they were all that loud, but I was only ever comparing it to, say, the stock air coolers that come with it. So they do have noise and, you know, is the performance, the temperature drop that much better? But I've never used a CPU air cooler that's this large, this expensive, this nice. So I'm going to compare it to this uh, Corsair H100i, but it's a 280 millimeter. The main thing that we're looking for from our CPU cooler is obviously how well it cools our CPU, but also noise output and how cute the thing is on your build. I'm gonna open the box up, get my hands on everything inside, then we're gonna install it on the board. We're gonna run all the tests and all the uh, computer number things. We're just gonna go through this real quick. I hope it has everything in here. Um, did I do it wrong or? I doubt this was supposed to just kind of fall off. Come on. This is inside the box when it's empty. Intel mounting kit, AMD mounting kit. clips for the fans. And you know, I bet you they use the thermal paste whoever had it before. So I doubt that I'm gonna have the thermal paste. Kinda coming apart. Oh man, this is dinged up. And there's a scrape on the side. It is not in the bestest of condition. We've got dings right here. Got, bam. It's a shame, because Amazon does do pretty well most of the time, but you know, they kind of biffed it on this one. That might be something that I send back if I can't bend those back. Other than the paperwork, we've got two of the Be Quiet Silent Wings. We've got seven heat pipes running through, uh, aluminum base. The construction is, is real nice. Hopefully this is gonna fit over my RAM sticks. We've got this cute and adorable brushed aluminum finish on the top of it, very nice. We should be able to push the heck out of it, see what kind of performance we can get maxed out. Time to put this incomplete CPU cooler on my ASRock X570 Extreme 4 motherboard with a 3900X computer processor. You're gonna remove the stock brackets and install the ones that were included. Go ahead and apply that thermal paste horribly because you're a stupid monster. Place the cooler. Screw that cooler to the bracket. Insert fans and clip to the fin slots. Plug in those fans, and you're done. This should be an easy install for any experience level. The main thing that we're gonna need from an expensive upgrade on our cooler is obviously gonna be lower CPU temperatures. And that's especially important if you're moving up from a stock cooler. 
because you're gonna wanna see a large difference for that investment that you're making. For the initial comparison, it's gonna be the Corsair 280 millimeter AIO against the Dark Pro 4, and I'm gonna be running stock for each of them, and that's st stock settings across the board. That's throwing them both onto this system and just letting them run. First up is Modern Warfare Warzone, and it's running at 1440p Ultra. The Dark Pro 4 stock ran 64 FPS and had an average temp of 57. The Corsair 280 ran 2 FPS slower at 62 and had an average temperature that was 2 degrees higher at 59. Overclocked, the Dark Pro 4 had a way better FPS at 74 and even dropped down to 52 average temperature. Next, I ran 3D Mark Fire Strike Ultra. Dark Pro at stock had a high temperature of 71 with a score of 6374. The Corsair 280 ran 6 degrees higher at 77, with pretty much the same score at 6363. And then overclocked, the Dark Pro 4 had 4 degrees lower in high temperature, with a score of 6525. The reason that there's not a huge change is because 3D Mark is mainly going to be coming off your GPU, but we definitely did still see an increase. In Cinebench R20, the Corsair 280 actually did have a higher score than the Dark Pro 4 at stock. The AIO ran 6766, while the Dark Pro 4 at stock only had 6604. But when overclocked, the Dark Pro 4 came in and had a much higher score of 7405. I know there's going to be plenty of people complaining at me because I'm running these tests on an open air box, but it's the easiest way to move things in and out, and plus they're still under the exact same conditions when running the benchmarks, and it's still an accurate representation of, you know, a difference in cooling. Oh, it's noise time, baby boys. After my G12 video where I didn't talk about the noise output, I got a lot of people commenting and asking and complaining to me about not adding it. And you know what? They're right, and I should have done it. But keep in mind, especially with an AIO, the fans that you use are going to have a huge impact on that. Obviously, the pump itself on the AIO is going to make differing levels of noise depending on what you're using. Um, but the fans especially, they're going to make a big difference. And that's kind of the trouble of this, because you could say, I have the Dark Pro 4, and I'm using exactly exactly what it came with fan-wise, putting it on there, running it. That's gonna be the same across the board, but with AIOs, there's so many different ones. To give a definitive, you know, this air cooler is quieter and better than AIOs, just not really able to do that. We're gonna run the test the same as the last group, that it's gonna be stock, just thrown on there, exactly how it comes, see how the noise compares to one another, and then it's going to be uh, overclocking and adding some fans, and seeing what the noise is like when we're just pushing the hell out of it. All of these tests were done with the same microphone and at the same distance. I don't have a good meter to give precise numbers, but to my ears, stock was a lot quieter and the audio meters I do have say that the overclock was right in between the other two tests. The Dark Pro at stock and overclocked were both quieter than the Corsair 280. Well, we made it to the end. Good for us. Let's summarize this by putting it into the three categories that I stated before, low temps, uh, the noise output, and cuteness level. So across the board, the Dark Pro 4 did do better than the Corsair, but only by just small margins. That was temperature, performance, in Modern Warfare, you got a couple more FPS um, with staying just a little bit cooler. Cinebench, same thing. Score was a little bit better, but we didn't reach as much of a top uh, heat whenever it was running prolonged. Um, and that goes with 3D Mark as well. Just uh, pretty consistent across the board. That wasn't touching anything. So whenever you're comparing those, if you're not someone who's gonna be messing with anything, then it really just kind of comes down to preference and what kind of deal you get. If you think it looks cooler, go for it. If it fits better in your box, do that. Um, also a whole lot easier to install. That's kind of a big point of it is, you know, it just pops on there. Like I don't think I've had as easy of a uh, CPU cooler install as the Dark Pro 4 was. That was pretty cool. So performance, let's give it a B plus, 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 plus. With noise, it does perform better. The Corsair AIO, I've had trouble with it. Not only is it 
a decent bit loud. It also gives off sort of a whine, kind of a, kind of just like, a, I mean, just subtle, but it pierces the ear. It might not even come through the audio all that well, but it's just enough to be very noticeable at times when, you know, usually it can be white noise and you just don't even notice these things. But with, at least with the fans that come on the Dark Pro 4, they're wonderful. Threw on the extra fans and, you know, uh, uh, I mean, just pushed that baby boy real hard. And still, you know, it, there was more noise than the Corsair, but it was a smoother noise, a more uh, digestible amount of noise. Last is cuteness. And boy, if this chonky thing is not just gorgeous. This part obviously is gonna be more of a personal preference, but I think it's delightful. I wish that this wasn't already dinged up. It, uh, Amazon has been having trouble. I ordered a AIO like six months ago and it was new and it was dinged to hell. So be careful with those. Um, maybe Amazon, just definitely double check. You're gonna notice stuff like that though. Part missing, blah, 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 still a very good deal. But I will be getting another one because this thing just looks great. I like seeing it. Um, adding on extra fans, making it extra cute. I'm definitely gonna be adding my Thermaltake RGB fans to it. Uh, it's a sturdy, sturdy box, giant metal boy, and I'm a big fan. I think the cuteness is an A plus minus. That's it. I don't care if you buy it or not. You're gonna have questions and that's fine. Hopefully I covered enough of the questions. Um, thanks for thanks for coming along. I'm back at it. More stuff. Hopefully it doesn't take as long. The world's weird. Good night.